You know him, you love him. It's Drado Morello. And today we're going to be talking how to open up your chakras. Today I was presented with a really, really cool message from my intuition or my spirit or whatever you want to call it. As I was meditating, it came up to me that I should do some candle meditation. It just popped up into my mind that I should stare at some candles. And then all of a sudden, that's what I was doing for the last couple of hours. Picked up a couple of instances, a couple things to light up, and I just started staring at the fire for hours. That's right, 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 right now, as you can see, my eyes look kind of like watery or they look red. That's because I was staring into the flames. And it turns out this is a very popular, ancient meditation known as candle gazing. And the reason why, or rather, the benefits that they claim of candle gazing is that you can increase your pineal gland. It also is another way to still the mind and to be present in the moment. So it's a way to remove the excess and just kind of be present. So my best, get, best bet is that by learning how to be present and then also by just staring at the fire and the flames, you can open up your pineal gland, which will access you to higher levels of consciousness, consciousness, entities, spirit guides, or helps you to reach other dimensions, other different insights, other different kind of clues about, about life, about unlocking higher levels of wisdom, essentially. So one big piece here is that it increases the pineal gland. So I'm going to re recap that real quick. Candle gazing increases pineal gland and also helps you to be present and in the moment. Lately, my kudalini has been very, very active lately. It feels like something's like bubbling inside my, in my sacral area. It also feels like it's like kind of like expanding. It's kind of feel like that motion. That's why this topic has been recently surfaced. I actually was trying to minimize my spirituality, but then this whole week has been a very spiritual week for me. My intuition has dramatically increased. I was seeing visions. I was dreaming. I was very, very deep in my meditations. And just me and spirit were going back and forth. There was a moment where I was actually talking to, I was actually talking to God. Or I was talking to the subconscious, accessing to my higher subconscious. Whichever one you want to, you know, you, whatever you want to call it. I was talking to spirit guides. I was talking to subconscious. And I, I was in this like, like, it was like, like, Oh, I got to that point. Another thing is, I was reading this book called Train the Brain many years ago. And this book, one of the tips that they mentioned was to use your opposite hand to maximize your memory, to improve your memory. And I knew this from way, way, way back in the days. And... Da Vinci, another thing, cool thing about Da Vinci is that he also was ambidextrous. So a lot of these... <sighs> da Vinci was really, really far, far beyond his time period. A lot of things that I'm discovering, Da Vinci already discovered. So it's like, I honestly feel like if you can just retrace Da Vinci and a lot of his kind of t uh, secrets and obtain how he became so, so super smart, I think you would actually see that he was far beyond his time but there was something mysterious about da vinci way way too, he was too far beyond his time he knew about sexual transmutation he knew about the ability to ambidextrous he knew about the how to train your brain how to be maximized he came up with genius ideas far beyond his time me personally i think he was con he was contacting either higher forms of consciousness because he was either in a higher vibration or he was talking to spirit entities or spirit guys that was helping him helping him to come up with these genius ideas anyways back to train the brain and the reason why I even mentioned that so they said if you are a righty you should be using your left hand and it's like why just to 
increase your memory. Now the theory is here is that this will be increasing your other side of the hemis hemisphere of the brain. So I guess like one portion controls the other one and then when you use the other one you're using a different side of the brain that you're not normally use using. So now how does this tie into Kudalini and chakras? Now there's a lot of exercises and stretches that help you to tap into different muscles and different parts of your energy centers that will help help you to open and expand. Most of the time you'll see that people's spines are when they're like down, when it's literally like in a downward movement. This is an indication of poor health because the central nervous system is a straight line up. So if it's any way kind of like disformed, that is a big indication that something is wrong because the mind spits information to the central nervous system and the central nervous system stores this information. So essentially you can tell that this either their life force is really, really, really messed up or that, you know, they're getting older or many other different, many other different reasons. But anyways, stretching is one good way to expand on your energy centers. So the theory is that we have energy centers, we have meridians, we have something called natus. We have, I just, Think of it as all one giant muscle. The more muscles that you open up, the more gifts, abilities, skills, attributes, traits you will possess. Now to me, this is so fascinating to me because it's like, this is essentially self-mastery. This is what is the, the pinnacle point of self-mastery and what that really is. Now, why does this even matter? Why would you want to invest your time into stretching, dancing, doing this, doing that. I have a theory that it's about reintegrating, becoming one with your higher self, or B, just maximizing your mind and body system this way that it's in, it's operating on maximum levels. Because any single point that is deficient is going to create a d sort of disharmony in your your mind and body system. It's the, we can use a metaphor of a car. One of the parts is broken, the whole thing is jammed, or the whole thing is messed up, whatever. So it's, with our mind and body system, it's important for our spirituality because it will help you to access, one, your true potential, two, be in more alignment, also reduce stress, anxiety, and all sorts of negativity in your life. And then you will be able to really, really, really maximize your potential. And I mean this from a beyond what we talk about 1D, 2D, 3D, where I'm talking about you can be integrate your spirit body within your physical body. And this is something that I've been working on for a very, very long time. And it's one of those things that I recently just got into it back just like just now, just because intuition and my spirit has just kind of put me back a different way. And I'm just trying to maximize my spirituality as much as I can. Now living in the world with full of work priorities and a lot of different things that we have to do on a day to day basis, it's pretty challenging when we talk about mastery of thyself. It's probably even better if you just kind of like go to a cave and just do it by yourself away from everybody else because with too many distractions, it's hard to maximize yourself. But that's like a whole topic for another, another, another topic for another thing. So what was I talking about again? So I was talking about stretching. Okay. Yes. So there's various different parts of our body that contains energy centers. And you want to maximize, I'm sorry, like my, my kudalini is very active. It's like circulating. You want to maximize your energy centers this way that the points are opening and expanding. And you also want to stop resisting certain things. But 
this is more of a practical guide, so let me think. Things like writing, things like dancing, things like art, things like stretching. Stretching is a really, really big one. Flexing is a big one that most people won't won't probably get into. It's I honestly, I'm actually considering stretching is more important than going to the gym at this point. Because stretching, uh, stretching involves your, your spirit body, your energy centers. The areas with internally and within your own physical body that you cannot access normally. So let me see if I can do something. Let me, let me stretch. I'm going to stretch my head real quick. All right, so that's something that I was I've been I've been working on lately. I'm trying to get to a point where it's like a 360, like, whoo, and then you guys are gonna see me like, and my head's gonna be like this, kind of like a snake twirling and swirling in different directions. It's pretty interesting, honestly. That's kind of where I'm trying to get it to. Whew, man, I don't want to say too much because the things I say is too much, and it's like I gave you guys a lot with the little I say, so it's kind of like. I try not to say too much, but then again, I always kind of say too much. So, okay, stretching, exercising. Oh yeah, to go back, I still recommend exercising because exercising will help you build up your physical body. And yes, that will also help you evolve spiritually as well. I was just making a point that I find it more interesting right now to do more flexing and stretching because this will work on so many different energy points that you have never probably even discovered or you probably have never even seen and stretching is a, is one way where you can is it's, it's an instant quick test you can stretch and then you'll feel a lot of those tensions and those those points releasing and opening up you're like whoa it's like well it's like like the stress is literally going into the air that's how it feels like so going back to the star no the candle gazing i was Staring at the flames today, and then I was just staring at it for a long time. And the reason why I was doing this is because spirit or my intuition led me to this because I don't know. I, I guess I was asking spirit to help me to access higher information. And then spirit told me, Stare at the flames, candle meditation. And so I did, and it was hurting my eyes. And so what I noticed from doing this is that I'm pretty sure that the theory behind candle gazing is that it opens up your pineal gland. But I actually discovered even more so than just that. This led me to understand, well, a lot of these things was a reminder to me, but it also reminded me what I'm not doing. Because you got to fully stretch out a lot of these kind of energy points so that you can open up your whole entire mind and body system, the energy center, energy points, you gotta start, you know, maximizing in all different, all different directions. Breathing is another good one to let the energy flow. And there's some breathing techniques to help you tap into different points. Meditation visualization is another good way to help you to access different points. I won't go in too much into that one because that one can be very in-depth and also information like that costs money to be honest. Like that type of information is worth a lot of money to be sharing. All right, so we, we cover meditation, we cover stretching, we cover candle gazing, oh, pineal gland. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the point. So, oh yeah, iodine is another good one for opening up the pineal gland. So then I realized that you got to maximize these two points because the pineal gland is like a muscle and in order to open it up, you have to stretch it out. And it brought me into this as well, where it's like, let me, let me see if I can do this. Wait, hold up. Did I do it right? So what I did there was I was trying to cross, do a cross eye, which you, you pretty much slant the eyes and go that way. 
And what that does is that it also opens up the third the third eye in the penile gland. And that was something I used to do as a kid. So I was like, like, whoa, you serious? I used to do that as a kid. And there's another one where you can do like this. Hold up. Let me see if I can do this. Hold up. Okay, so that's those two that I just showed you there was another way to open up the pineal gland. The point is that by opening up the pineal gland and working on the pineal muscle, you can open up your psychic senses and your psychic intuition, your psychic gifts, and all that good stuff. And this all was brought to me by Spirit just talking to me about candle meditation. Candle kind of meditation led me to also just remember that I need to stretch out all my energy points, such as my head, kind of like a snake, and all other different types of things that you could be doing, such as meditation, dancing, writing, all, all these different types of things works on your energy flow. And once again, your intuition is your best kind of compass on where you need to be headed in this direction. So I know this video was a little long, but I wanted to make this a little long because this video was a good quick crash course or guide on how to open up your chakras and the energy centers. So I'm just gonna quick do a quick recap. We have energy centers within our mind and body system that opens up our spirit and then by also activating these energy centers, maximizing our whole mind and body, we can evolve spiritually and we can develop more gifts, qualities, attributes, and who knows, maybe we'll, we'll get into the 4D, 5D, and all that good stuff. Today I was actually trying to go to the 5D myself, or 4D, whatever. I was hoping that with this candle flame thing that I was doing that I could teleport myself into a different dimension. Honestly, but I couldn't stare at the freaking flame for too long. Everything every, was like, oh, 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 man, like, I kid you not, like 60 seconds of staring at the fire. And I was like, I was doing all sorts of weird things to like make me like, um, <laughs> let me show you guys. I was doing this. Staring at the fire. Damn, this is, this is pretty good. Damn. Oh man, wow. So that was there was just trying to me hold my eye eyelids so that I would not blink as I was staring at the flames during that meditation session. Oh man, that was freaking hard. I, I was a little, I don't want to say disappointed. I was hoping that man, I was going to teleport to the next dimension, be like my boy Da Vinci. Oh man, but staring at the flames is freaking hard man holy cow give it guys give it a try see how it is, how it works for you stare at the fire you know like at this this distance see how far well this distance and just see how long you can last as you stare at the flames and see in theory it should open up your penile gland also the exercises like the cross-eyed exercise and you know, just do other different types. Just get the uh, main idea here and then start performing those things that will help you to open up those energy centers, which was the main idea behind this video. I know I, was, I said this was, that was like summary. All right, back to summary. Maximize the energy centers within your whole mind, body, and spirit. I don't want to say even more than that because, uh, no, I can't say more than that. Maximize the energy centers within your whole mind and body and you will be able to evolve spiritually and this will help open up your chakras This will open up your kudalini That's all I got for you today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up subscribe Also, remember to check out my website prosperitylifevest.com. I got amazing secrets of life on my website a lot of the information I get is channeled by my spirit by my intuition that I channel and I just bring it to you guys. Until next time.